Hi, I'm Kevin Gaines, and I'm the CEO of Biota Aquariums. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and maintain your Biota Aquarium in just a few easy steps. All right, so by now we've all been anxiously awaiting, and we now have our Fluval Evo 13 and a half. So let's open it up and see what we got. Just want to inspect everything carefully, make sure everything's in order. This will be the tank lid. This is the light. Another small filter lid that'll go here. Light transformer and the water pump. So now we're ready to take the aquarium out of the box. All right, we're looking good. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the pump. The pump's a critical component that re takes the water from the aquarium from here and returns it to the tank and creates flow and oxygen for the fish, but also runs the water by the filtration media. So we'll open up the pump box here. There's a second nozzle in here um, that's not needed for the biota aquarium, so we'll just leave that. This is a 500 gallon per hour submersible pump. We're going to take a piece of flexible tubing and put it on this and it will attach to a 90 degree fitting to return the water. The tubing is in here. And here's your return nozzles and fitting. We're going to carefully unscrew these counterclockwise. So this fitting is going to go in the pump compartment and this will go through the filter wall once we've connected the pump. We'll just set it right here for now. Pour it off. Now we're ready to attach the tubing. It's a flexible tubing, so it goes over the, this is called a hose barb here pretty easily. So we'll just carefully slip it over. And we want it to go all the way down to the bottom of the fitting like that. So it's all the way flush. Next thing we're going to do is connect this 90 degree elbow. We want to do it so that it's facing the filter wall because the pump will go into the filter compartment just like this. This nozzle is a little bit bigger, so you have to kind of work the tubing over the nozzle a little carefully. Now you want to make sure that you push it up as far as you can so that this doesn't ever come off. Next thing we're going to do is just lower the pump down into the filter compartment, pump compartment. Now we take the return nozzles and we're going to thread it through the filter wall clockwise into this fitting. And you don't want to over tighten it. This is just a hand tighten. So the next step is going to be, um, you'll find your heater in your accessory box, but it's easy at this point in time to go ahead and add it to the, the filter compartment. So we're going to be putting the heater into the protein skimmer compartment it's an optional piece of equipment. And for those of you who will not be using the skimmer, we'll go ahead and put it there. If you do use the protein skimmer, we will add it to the pump compartment. So this is the submersible heater. It has a dial on top. We will dial that into 78 degrees and simply attach these two suction cups to the glass of the filter wall before we're ready to plug it in. As long as this is down below the water level, which would be here, is perfect. There's a lot of flexibility in, in where this goes, but you want to make sure it's low enough to clear the lid. Next, we're going to wash the Biomax biological filter media and the carbon. As you can see, it comes in protective plastic bags. So we'll take the bags off, rinse it in fresh water. All right, so we're gonna rinse the Biomax media first. Now charcoal is gonna have some black dust come out of it. This is normal. 
after they've been rinsed and removed from their bags, we'll push this straight back into the filter compartment. Next thing we'll do is hook up the light. This will be the light itself. This is a 31 LED light. LEDs last 50,000 hours of use. They don't produce heat. And this is the proper spectrum for a marine aquarium, about 14,000 Kelvin. So it's got a hint of blue, really bright, nice white light, which is great for corals. Get this large lid, which the light mounts into. So the light cord will be running through this hole here and out the back of the aquarium. We'll set this into place for now. So we'll run this through the hole in the back of the lid and set the light into place. Next we'll unbox the filter compartment or the lid. This merely just hides all the cords, slows down evaporation. If you notice, there's two notches. We use those to run the electrical cords out of the aquarium and make sure the lid's flush and seated properly. And uh, we'll be ready to start adding seawater and mixing the sand. Now it's time to make seawater and begin to fill the aquarium. So today we're going to be using some filtered water. So let's talk about that just for a minute. Um, the water that you put in the aquarium is critically important because if it's not filtered like reverse osmosis or um, charcoal filter nozenated, um, you end up adding nutrients to the tank that fuel algae and create problems. Uh, phosphates or silicates or other things that are found in, in tap water and non-filtered water. So today we're going to be using purified water. I should hope that um, you have access to such. If not, then you can use tap water as a last resort. So we'll just start to add the fresh water. And we're going to get the tank halfway full with fresh water and then add the salt. So now we're going to add both packets of salt to the fresh water. There's a notch here in the top right corner. So we'll tear that and dump it straight in. Each one of these will treat up to five gallons of full strength seawater. And since we're not going to be at full strength seawater, this makes enough, the water salty enough for the entire aquarium. We'll add both packets and then mix it in the tank. So then you just kind of want to gently um, run your hands in here. You'll feel the salt gets a little warm as it dissolves, which is normal. And um, what you want to do is just make sure there's none piled up anywhere. Just mix it around for a couple minutes. And as we add more fresh water, this salt will dilute into it. So I can feel it in my fingers is slowly disappearing. And it's okay that there's a little bit um, undissolved because it will naturally mix in on its own. But because we're going to be adding the sand next, we want to make sure that there's no piles of undissolved salt underneath the sand. Okay, so we've, um, we've added both packets of salt. There's none on the bottom. It's actually already starting to clear. I can already see the bottom glass of the aquarium. It's only been just a few minutes. And now we're going to add the live sand. So we'll take the pack of 
six pounds of live sand and we're just going to cut one of the corners open. So we add the sand now so that uh, the water level rises and is displaced with the sand prior to being full as well as um, it creates a little less turbidity in the aquarium by adding it now versus when the tank's full of water. Okay, so we're gonna cut this corner. We can tear it a little more and then add the sand. You can place the bag in the water, a little easier to manage. You just want to kind of spread it out evenly. We'll, we'll straighten it out with our hands here in a minute, but no wrong way to do this. Just try to get as much of it out as possible. And sometimes there's little pieces of stuff in, in the sand that's uh, completely normal and it will be removed by the surface skimmer. What I also like to do is after I've dumped it out, you can get some water in there and pour it out and get pretty much all the sand out. Okay, that's good. So we'll slowly kind of make this even over the bottom of the aquarium so it's not piled up anywhere. There's no visible glass. And this will clear up in again, 12 to 24 hours, which is why we wait to add the live rock. So we've added the salt and the sand, and we're just going to continue to add fresh water. It's going to move the sand away right where we're adding it, which is okay. And we're good. So just shy of 11 gallons. Yeah, so we're using the hydrometers to check the salinity now that we've added um, just about 11 gallons of fresh water and then the, the two packets of salt and the live sand and we're comparing these two hydrometers to show you that um, initially sometimes there's static um, that causes bubble formation on these floats and they can vary tremendously between each other so um, you want to make sure that you fill it with water and dump it out and then kind of shake it and tap it underwater to make sure that there's absolutely no bubbles on the white float. And when you're done, you should get a reading of 1021, 1.021 salinity. So next we're going to plug in the pump. We want to make sure our hands are nice and dry so we don't have any shock hazards. <laughs> um, when directing this water flow, uh, we want to aim this one kind of down where the live rock's going to be right here in the center. So we want one of those to aim kind of right at it. And this one, you don't want it pointing too high or when you plug in the water, it's going to shoot water on the floor. So we want to make sure that it's aimed just slightly down, but right at the surface of the water right here. And then that one aims kind of in this direction. And there's a couple reasons why they do this, but most importantly is this will create um, an area where we'll be feeding the fish here and it'll keep the food from going into the filter. So now we're going to plug them in. You have three plugs. This is where a strip plug will come in handy. You have your heater. You'll have your light as soon as we put it on. And then you have your pump. So the first one we're going to do is the heater and here's your pump. So this will start the filtration process and the water will all migrate towards the surface overflow here, go into the filter compartment, past the heater, through the biological biomax media, the charcoal or the carbon, and then to the pump. At this point, we'll straighten out the sand gently. Just be careful when you put your arm all the way in the tank because it's pretty full. And we'll cover up the areas where we added water and we'll start to remove all these bubbles off of the back wall with our hands. They'll eventually disappear as well, but um, it's nice to just go ahead and do it while the tank's empty before the rock and stuff get here. Okay, 
So the tank is running, the filters uh, pumps working, we can see the flow here, and we're ready to uh, put the lid and the light on. We're gonna go ahead and remove the hydrometer. You can just gently slide it up the glass. It's probably the easiest way. And take it out of the tank. You don't really wanna leave this in the tank because algae will grow on it and on the float and that affects the accuracy of it as well. So I wanna keep it handy by the aquarium for our water changes in a couple weeks. Next, we'll take the lid and add the light. So we have this small hole where the light cord's gonna go through. here and then gently set the light in this channel and we have the filter cover and we have the cord slots here so we'll run the pump through this one and the light and the heater if there's no protein skimmer we're going to use this side set. So we've added the salt and the sand and filled the tank with water. We have the pump running and now we're going to add on the thermometer. So the thermometer just simply sticks on the glass and gives us a reading of the temperature of the tank and we can take a quick glance at it daily when we're feeding the fish just to make sure there's no problem with temperature whether the room's too hot or the heater's has an issue or whatever. So we'll peel this apart and we're gonna place this in a conspicuous area but not obviously where we wanna view the aquarium. So I like to put it right down in this corner here just above the sand and it makes contact with the water through the glass and gives you a reading. So we wanna maintain the temperature around 78 degrees and this does the trick for us. Okay, so we're going to uh, leave the light off until the fish and corals come, and this allows the tank to cycle better with the bacteria in the, in the aquarium water. All right, here we have the single piece of live rock for the biota aquarium. This comes moist, um, it's wet with seawater, and most importantly, carries the nitrifying bacteria that help filter the water and cycle it, which allows you to add fish so quickly. This is a man-made material out of calcium carbonate, which actually helps uh, the calcium levels in the aquarium. And it's placed in the aquarium very gently because the bottom of the aquarium is glass and you do not want to drop this in the tank and break, break the tank, as well as be careful not to touch the sides of the aquarium with the rock and scratch the glass. So each biota aquarium rock weighs about eight to 10 pounds and can simply be placed in the aquarium um, right in the middle off the front and sides glass. I'm choosing to put the larger end against the filter wall so that the rock comes out to the front of the aquarium and kind of narrows down like a peak. So we'll just gently set this in two hands so we don't drop it. And it's a uh, staple, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, so the, the nozzles, as you can see, are, are running. You can see the pump, the water movement. It's a 500 gallon per hour pump which um, takes water in here through the surface. So any oils or different things, surfactants get filtered out and they go into the filter where they're biologically filtered and the carbon treats them as well before being returned by the pump past the heater. What I recommend is you point one of these nozzles kind of down across the top of the rock. So it's the water level, one of them shooting about here. And I like this one on the surface. It makes a little bit of a ripple for the light um, as well as when you add food, <clears throat> which will be at this end on the, through the lid, the opening, the food stays around here for the fish to eat without it going directly into the filter where they can't eat it and it breaks down and causes problems. So this, uh, this nozzle arrangement here works, works really well for that. 
Okay, so we've re received our live rock. Our tank is ready to receive the fish. We activated the code and we made arrangements to be home. The fish are shipped via overnight carrier, so we want to make sure that you're available to receive them the day after you order them. And they come in an insulated box just like this. These fish are shipped um, in a cooler for temperature control. In the summer we use ice packs and in the winter we use heat packs to maintain the temperature. And this is an industry standard for the fish. We, we really take care of these animals and we want to make sure that they arrive to you in the condition that they left our facility. So you have an insulated styrofoam box, a liner bag to control any spills, and your fish. So here's the Rainford goby. And the clownfish. So they're shipped in one-third seawater to two-thirds oxygen. And the next step is acclimating them. So we're going to float them in the aquarium and then release them to the tank to their new home. So the exciting time is here. We're going to be acclimating our fish to our new biota aquarium. When we receive them, they come in the water here with um, oxygen. And we're going to want to inspect the fish just to make sure everything's um, looking good with them. This fish is very alert. Um, he's ready to go to his aquarium. And sometimes when they come in, they'll be a little bit pale, and this is completely normal. So the acclimation process will be involved in floating the bags in the aquarium for 20 minutes to acclimate the temperature. And then we're going to slowly add some tank water to the bags in, in order to get the tank water um, to the same water parameters as the bag water. What you're going to want to have is a measuring cup to remove some water from the aquarium. When we float these bags in the tank, the water level is going to rise, so we're going to want to remove some of that water. And then a pitcher, because um, we want to be able to pour off as much water after acclimation into the pitcher to keep it from going into the aquarium. This water has been shipped for 24 hours with your fish, and we want to try to keep that um, dirty water out of the aquarium. So next we'll remove the lids of the tank so that we can float the bags and begin the temperature acclimation. It's a good idea to turn the lid sideways. This actually allows you to float the bags here and keeps them from going into the filter area. The next step is to remove some water. So we'll take the measuring cup here and this will slowly lower the aquarium level so that we can float the bags without overflowing the tank. This water will also be used to add to the, t the bag water after the temperature acclimation for helping with the water adjustments. So next we'll take the bags and gently lower them in the tank here. So the temperature acclimation is 20 minutes and then we'll slowly begin to add aquarium water to the bags. We'll just push the lid over a little bit to hold the bags in place. And this begins the temperature acclimation process. 20 minutes have gone by. We're ready to slowly acclimate the fish to the actual water in the aquarium. So what we're going to want to do first is um, open one of the bags. This is a pair of scissors here. And we're going to add some of the tank water we removed when we added the bags. So this slowly starts to acclimate the fish to the tank. Just a little bit like that is plenty. And we want to wait 10 minutes, and then we'll do that one more time before releasing the fish to the aquarium. It's a good idea at this point to just kind of hang the bag over the side here carefully so that they don't sink into the aquarium. We'll do the next one. Same process, just add a little bit of the tank water we removed. And this helps bring the fish to the same pH and water parameters of the aquarium they're getting ready to go into. So we'll wait 10 minutes after adding the water and we'll do it one more time and then we'll be ready to release the fish into their new home. Since this bag is a lot smaller with the rain for goby, we'll just add a little less water. 
And you can also um, use the lid again to help hold these bags in place. You don't want them sinking into the tank and the bag water getting into the aquarium. So we'll wait 10 minutes now and repeat the process and then we'll be ready to release them. Okay, so we're 10 minutes away from being able to acclimate our fish fully to their new aquarium. Uh, this is the second addition of tank water to the bags. So we'll wait 10 more minutes after adding water a second time. And then we'll be ready to release them. So we'll just do the same thing we did before by adding a little bit of water to each bag. And we'll wait 10 more minutes and we'll be ready to let them go. Okay, so now we're ready to actually release the fish into the aquarium. The moment of truth. So we'll uh, slide the lid away. We'll start with the small Rainford goby. So what we're going to want to do is pour off as much of this water as possible into the pitcher so we don't get this water back into the aquarium. So we're going to pour it off. Just keep an eye on the fish. And it's okay to get a little bit of this water in the aquarium, so I can use my hand to hold the fish a little bit in the bag like I am. And now we'll just kind of gently slide them in. So there's the Rainford goby. Next we'll go to the clownfish. Same process. We're going to slowly remove the bag here. Let a um, little bit of the water drip off so it doesn't go all over. And we're going to pour off this water. You can actually scoop the fish with your hand if you're comfortable with that. It's not going to hurt the fish. But we're just going to pour off the water here. Once again, trying to eliminate as much of the bag water as possible from going into the aquarium. And as it gets lower, I can actually um, keep the fish in the corner of the bag with my hand. Don't want to swim out, but that's okay. So we just want to watch them. Now we've gotten rid of almost all the bag water and we'll pour the fish into the tank. And the last bag, same process. Let the bag drip a little bit. And now we're ready to pour off this water. I've got almost all the water out of the bag and we gently pour them in. So sometimes the fish will go down and, and um, hide for a little bit or they'll be ready and swimming around. It all depends on um, you know how they arrived but in, in, the fish will be eating in a matter of hours. So um, yeah this is a acclimation process. So the Biota Aquarium comes with um, some options for soft corals and we're going to acclimate these the same way. We're going to float them for 20 minutes for temperature and then add the tank water to the bags so that they can acclimate the water chemistry. We'll remove two cups of water to do this just like we did with the fish and now we'll float the corals to acclimate the temperature. These are both leather corals. They're very um, hardy and great corals for the Biota Aquarium. So then again, we slide the lid over just to hold the bags to keep them from going into the filter area. And we'll wait 20 minutes before adding tank water. So we've waited 20 minutes to acclimate the temperature on the, the corals. And now we're going to open the bags and add tank water to the bags. Just a little bit of the water we remove from the aquarium goes in and then we'll wait 10 minutes and do that one more time before we put the corals in the aquarium. Pull 
pull it open a little bit. Add a little tank water. Slide the lid to keep them from sinking into the tank. And 10 minutes, we'll do the same thing. So we've waited 10 minutes. We're gonna add tank water to the bags one more time before we place the corals in the aquarium. So this is the second 10 minutes of acclimating water to the bags. We'll add a little bit to each one again. And once again, this just stabilizes the pH and acclimates the difference in salinities and different things from transport. So we'll slide the lid back over and then in 10 minutes, we'll be able to place the corals into the aquarium. So we're done acclimating the corals and we're ready to add them to the aquarium. So what we're gonna do is slide the lid over and we're gonna pour off the water out of the bag, just like we did with the fish. We don't want this, keep it out as much as possible. So we'll pour this off. And we're gonna end up putting the coral in our hand. So, so we'll pour off the coral here um, into our hand. As you can see, it's, um, it's completely okay to leave the coral out of water for some time. Um, it comes on a small little rock base, and then this is the, the soft coral itself. We want to put the coral into the aquarium so that it's always getting direct light from the light. So we don't want to put it under the rock to where it's shadowed. We can place it in the sand out front so we can watch it. Um, it does really well there, or we can place it up high or anywhere on the rock work. And when we do that, we just want to make sure that it's in the rocks and it's not going to be falling over. Okay, so we're going to be placing the coral into the aquarium. I'm going to put this one up in the rock so that it's directly under the light. These corals do not need to be fed. They photosynthesize using the light from the aquarium. So depending on the rock and how your rock is shaped, you'll just find a little place that the coral is secure. Another really good thing to keep in mind with the corals is they like flow. They don't um, like water directly at them, but as long as the nozzle's in their direction, they're quite happy. So we'll put that one there. Now we'll take out the second coral. Just let some water drip off. And once again, we're going to pour off the water that the coral came in out of the bag. And then we'll pour off this coral right into our hand to be placed into the aquarium. So this is the coral. It's attached to this base, this rock. And we're gonna place this one right out front in the sand in the direct light. You can also place this one in the rock if you'd like as well. It's really up to you. But as long as the coral is directly under the light, it will do really well. Okay, so we've set up the aquarium, we've acclimated the fish in the rock, and we have the light on. And so we're gonna go over some things that we wanna observe uh, on a daily basis. So we wanna check the aquarium, we wanna account for all the animals, we wanna monitor the fish, make sure they're happy. I see all three fish. We look for the corals, make sure that the ones we recently placed in the aquarium haven't fallen over and they're still where we've placed them. And we wanna make sure that the water is flowing and we can see that by the ripple in the tank as well as the water moving at the surface. Um, the next thing we wanna do is just monitor the temperature. We wanna make sure we're at 78 degrees and the water level in the reservoir. And this is the proper level we wanna maintain in the aquarium. So now we're ready to feed the fish. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about how much food to feed. People ask, how are you able to put the fish in the aquarium so quickly? And the key is, is that we've added the live sand, which had the bacteria. We added the live rock that had nitrifying bacteria, and we're gonna strictly control how much food goes in. So this is what's gonna become um, waste products in the aquarium. So we wanna be very careful not to overfeed. We provide this pellet food to get you started. And we'll show you just how little food this takes to feed the fish. So we're gonna feed this much food twice a day. And we don't wanna show our friends how our fish eat three or four times a day because that will lead to a big, big problem. So we need to strictly adhere to how much food we feed and the water changes. And that keeps us from having any water quality issues, especially during the beginning cycling phase of the aquarium. All right, so our fish are ready to eat. 
we're going to add the food right here in the opening here, the end of the aquarium. So we've directed the water flow across the tank to keep the food from going into the overflow. It typically flo floats for a little bit and then slowly sinks. Thanks for watching the video and please share your stories on our Facebook page and be sure to check out our website at biotaaquariums.com.